Oh gosh, I gotta get inside. It's kind of cold. Oh, okay. If anyone's in here, any of my friends. Oh, hi. Is that you, Dr. Romano? Hi, how are you? What can I do for you? Why are you in here? I just finished up a problem for the Death Destroyer study group. So since you're here, I might as well share it with you all. No, Dr. Romano, I was taking a break from studying. Let's have a look at what we have here. Okay, Dr. Romano. We have a very large molecule, but before we even answer a question, why don't we just identify the functional groups? What do I see to the left? I have a ketone. Then I have a cycloalkene. I have an ether. And I got a primary alcohol. Okay. First thing I want to do is to look at how many chiral carbons there are. Now, in a problem like this, which would be considered a reasonably difficult problem, chiral carbons means there's four different groups attached to that carbon. But instead of thinking of four different groups, think of four different paths that you need to take. Almost as if you were a little bug and you're walking it down a road. So, for example, if you look here... Like a ladybug? Like a ladybug. Okay. Now, as you can see, think of this... If you go this way, you got one path. If yeah. you go this way, that's two paths. Two. If you go this way, that's three paths. Okay. And then the, the invisible H is over here. So as you can see, there's four different paths or roads the little bug can walk on. Wow. Now when we go to this carbon right here, you would see that this is the same thing. There would be four different paths. You would have going up, you got this path. Going to the right, going to the left, they're all different and then the invisible H would make another path. Obviously, this is not chiral because there's two H's. So this is no, 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 and there's a double bond, so that's disqualified. Likewise, this would be a chiral carbon right here because again, there's four different paths. Likewise, you would get a chiral carbon there, and we're gonna get a chiral carbon there. And then by quick inspection, you can see there's no other chiral carbons, and then finally, when we go over to here, you got one, two, three, and then the invisible H is here, and that gives you another one. So if you're counting them up, one, two, three, four, five, we have how many chiral carbons? We got a total of six chiral carbons. And I can also ask you how many stereoisomers. In order to do that, we use two to the N, where N being the number of chiral carbons, here there are six, so it's two to the sixth power, which gives you 64. So as you can see, if you were gonna synthesize this compound, there would be a lot of problems with stereochemistry because you have to make sure that each one of these chiral carbons is correct. For example, this can be an R or an S, this can be an R or an S, et cetera, et cetera. You would get 64 different possible stereoisomers. And if we ask you the number of constitutional isomers, that would be in the millions. Constitutional means the whole skeleton would be changed. I hope this gives you a good idea of how to do a commonly asked problem. If you can do a problem like this, then that'll be a piece of cake. So this would be a great practice to put in your toolkit. All right. Um, I Dr. Would... Romano, I really followed that the whole way. Well, good for you. And um, I will say good night. And I want to go back to my studies. So good okay. evening to you. Goodbye. I won't be seeing you again, sir. Have a good day, sir.